Smells like celery. All right, so today it's first impressions time. There have been so many new releases and I haven't done a first impressions video actually in a while. So we have some stuff from Elf, the Becca, Zero product, whatever it is, some drugstore, Physician's Formula, CoverGirl, lots of good stuff to try out in today's video. So if you're excited for this video and you enjoy while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. I just wanted to take five seconds and say, my videos haven't been showing up for a lot of people in their feeds lately. So if that's the case, or even if you're not sure, if you hit that bell notification down below, it'll just send you a push notification when I upload. So if the subscription feed isn't working, you should still get notified when I upload a video. But if you're not a notification kind of guy or gal, I feel ya. I'm here every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So just come to my channel. Even if you don't see it in my feed, hopefully it shows up on my channel. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start out with what I feel like is the biggest makeup punk of the um, entire existence, basically. This is the Becca Zero No Pigment Virtual Foundation. <laughs> oh man, I had a good laugh when I first saw this launch. So I was gonna do a full review on it when it first came out, but then there were so many videos and I figured, let's just try it in a first impression. It's a clear foundation. Here's the thing, we call that a primer. We're gonna try it today kind of as a primer because let's be honest, it's a primer. It's silicone free, but just the texture of it does look very silicone-y. It's in a glass bottle. It has nice packaging, glass jar. It's supposed to blur the pores and mattify. So let's see, let's see what it does, how it feels. So far it feels exactly like a kind of gel primer. It does seem to be sinking into my skin pretty quickly and like drying down. I just think the marketing for this and everything is just like, it's an April Fool's joke. So does it look like my pores are blurred at all. That is the question. I'm breaking out down here. I don't know how much that blurred my pores. It does give my forehead a nice glow and it looks like I kind of just have like skincare on. I don't see a whole lot happening. I feel like this is going to be in Buzzfeed articles about like the most ridiculous products that launched in 2020. <laughs> okay, so for foundation, I want to try this Youngblood Liquid Mineral Foundation. For some reason, the name of this made me think it was an MLM, but I don't think it is. You can order just directly from the website. You don't have to order through someone. I have two shades here, Bisque and Ivory. And I think I actually saw Lauren from The Bachelor, Lauren and Ari. She did like a makeup routine video and I was gonna do a video of recreating her makeup routine. That's why I got this, but didn't end up doing that video obviously, but here we are. I still wanna try it. So I think I'm definitely gonna be the lighter shade. This one is Ivory. This is supposed to be a hydrating foundation, lasting radiant finish, silky smooth and pore free. I think I'm gonna do half my face with the sponge, half with the brush. I do have a sponge I wanna try out. Let's start out with the sponge first. So this one is from AOA. This is a dollar, it's their Wonder Blender. And I've tried a bunch of their sponges. I just picked this one up because I was placing an order and I was curious. And so far this one feels like it's gonna be good. It feels very soft and bouncy. Most of their sponges you can't really go wrong with. They have some awesome makeup sponges for between like one and $2. Okay, with this sponge I'm getting, I would say light coverage, but I typically get light coverage with the sponge. I don't know if this is my shade. Let me try Bisque. I feel like Bisque is gonna be too dark, but I'm probably kinda in between the two maybe. Ooh, that's looking nice on my forehead. I think a brush is gonna be the way to go though. It's definitely my shade match. I just baked brownies and now I'm in like brownie coma. I ate one too many there. It's looking a little bit dry. Could just be on top of the Becca foundation, but it is supposed to be the Becca Primer Foundation, whatever we call it. I would say with the brush, it's about a medium coverage foundation. So Physicians Formula came out with a new foundation and concealer. This is their Natural Defense Total Cover Concealer. And I tried their foundation in a vlog, so I'll link that in the eye and down below, but didn't work out for me, spoiler alert. But I haven't tried the concealer, so let's give this a go. It has a little sponge applicator. I feel like it's gonna fly out. Got it. There's a twist lock on here. Feels like there's like no product in here. Look, I'm squeezing from the bottom and nothing is coming out the top. Look at this, nothing is coming out. I think I'm gonna dot it with their applicator and then blend it out with a brush. It says total cover. Guessing that means full coverage. Okay, I like the coverage, like how brightening that is and it dries down pretty quick, but it doesn't feel like drying. Yeah, that looks nice, I like that. I think I actually wanna try this CoverGirl powder. This is from their Clean Fresh line, but I wanna use it to set my under eyes, I think. So this is the shade 110 Porcelain. Yeah, I think that'll be light enough for my under eyes. If I find a powder that's light enough like this, I always like to try and use it on my under eyes just to see because typically translucent powders don't work out for me underneath my eyes, but I like something that has a little bit of pigment. So when you blend it out, it doesn't take away 
anything from the concealer. Ooh, that looks nice. It is brightening. I can see it going on, you know, because of the shade. I'm going to take a little bit around my pores. I just want to see if it blurs at all. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. I like that around my pores, too. I'm going to try 120 on the rest of my face. I like how it set my nose area and stuff, so I feel like this might work as an all-over one for me. Feels very light. Doesn't feel like a heavy powder at all. That looks pretty nice. I would totally use both of those again. Like, I would try it on my under eyes with my other concealers, and I would also use it on my face again. Ooh, it feels very soft to the touch, too. Brows are the only thing that I didn't have a new one to try, so I just put on some brows real quick. But I'm excited to try this new CoverGirl High Pigment Bronzer. I feel like high pigment isn't usually something that I want in a bronzer. I kind of personally like bronzers that are a little bit easier to blend out and have less pigment and you can build them up. Because I don't know how pigmented it's going to be, I'm going to take it on a big fluffy brush. I really like this one. This one is the Youngblood YB2. By the way, I'm not, <laughs> this isn't sponsored by Youngblood or anything. I just have a bunch of their stuff to try out. Let's try out this CoverGirl bronzer. With this brush, it's working totally fine. Like it doesn't seem to be too pigmented. It does have a little bit of an orangey hue to it. Okay, I think I like that one. I like how it blended out with this brush. It seemed pretty easy to work with. I think the tone can work. I don't think it's too, too orange. Next, I'm gonna try Guilt by Youngblood. This is one of their very like peachy looking blushes. And I think I'm gonna do Pretty Crazy Eyes. So I kind of want to just keep the blush a little bit more peachy, not super, you know, intense and pink, just kind of natural. That was pretty. Smells like celery. So far, we're having lots of wins. So I picked up more products from JD Glow and I got their Eclipse highlight. So I wanna try it out. It is a loose highlighter, which normally I'm not the biggest fan of. I just find them a little bit tricky to work with, but someone actually on my favorite highlighters video I did, I did a drugstore version and a high-end, and I was talking about how I hate having to tap out and get too much highlight. And someone was like, just keep the sticker halfway on. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. With loose highlighters, I like to kind of tap it out and make sure that the brush is kind of evenly coated so you're not getting one spot on your face with the highlight. Woo, that's intense. Okay, bringing it over. I do find that loose ones are typically a little bit more intense too than pressed. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh. Okay, I just primed my eyes and we're gonna go in with the star of the show, e.l.f. Retro Paradise Palette. Something about this collection, I just loved all of it. Like the marketing of it, the photos, just everything. It was so pretty. Oh my god, this shade, Dijon, love a good tone like that. And then canvas looks like it would be like a good everyday one too. And then you could even put some white on the inner corner if you're around my skin tone. I am going to start out with Dijon in the crease though, because I need to put that on my eyes immediately. Oh my gosh, super pigmented. I'm not on TikTok and I don't watch TikTok, but every now and then I'll see like a tweet with a TikTok or something. Apparently carrots and mustard as a snack are going around TikTok trending these days. And I don't know, I always grew up eating carrots with mustard. My mom used to do it. I thought it was just like a thing everyone did, but apparently it is not. Comment down below, have you tried it? I think it's bomb. I mean, I grew up with it though, so. <laughs> really having an internal debate over here about whether I should put purple on the lid or the green. I'm kind of feeling the green. I love a good neon green. I did a video sharing all of my favorite neons and pastels, like palettes, glitters, liners, everything. So I'll link that in the eye and down below. Do we see this? I'm in love. I'll probably take a brush in a second and just kind of clean up the edge right there, but for now I'm gonna get it down on this eye. Finger's definitely the way to go with this shade. I feel like Caliente maybe could look cool, kind of like blended into the edge, but I don't want it to get sewery looking. I feel like anytime you blend anything on top of green, it can kind of turn into the garbage. So I have a few different fun colors that I haven't tried. These are, I think these are new from NYX, but they're Epic Wear liner sticks. Maybe not. This one might be really cool. It's like a lime color, but I almost want to do either pink or purple and then use this purple shade on the bottom. I'm going to put this on the waterline. Okay, it does take a few passes to kind of show up on the waterline. It's not like the ColourPop ones where they're just like there. So just keep that in mind. I like the ColourPop ones and the Makeup Forever because it's like two swipes and you're good. But let's go in with Tropicana, which is like the prettiest matte violet color. And I'm just gonna add this to the lower lash line. I'm gonna take this on my finger. These shades look amazing with your finger and with the brush, it just doesn't quite show up as well, which is 
pretty normal for colors like this. A lot of times it just applies way better with the finger. So I'm going to kind of get it down with my finger. Look up. Wow. I didn't quite uh, envision how Barney we'd be looking right now. Where is Barney? Barney's still on TV. Do kids these days even know who Barney is? Oh, Disco actually looks, I thought it was going to be blue, but it's actually like a periwinkle. That is super pretty. Got to use that. That on my inner corner, just on the lower lash line, because I kind of want to blend it into the purple a little bit. That would look so pretty layered on top. Like if you put Tropicana all over the lid and then put a little bit of Disco and made like a halo eye. Look at this copper shade in there. For eyeliner, I want to try the Ilia Clean Line Liquid Liner. I've heard good things about Ilia's products in general. I have tried their highlighter and I've also been getting some questions from you guys about reviewing their tint, skin tint, and I have already been testing it. So I'm going to do a video on it soon if that Foundation Friday isn't already up before this one's up. I don't know the timing when this video is going up yet, but Ilia will be coming. So here's the packaging and it looks like it's a felt tip, but it does look tiny. Okay, super black. I like the fine point on here. Personally, I just find it easier to work with brush tip. I feel like it's easier to get a super clean line, but that one totally worked. I like how matte black that is. If you want like a matte matte, it dries down very quickly. We have a new mascara launch to try. This is the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I haven't looked at the wand on this or anything yet, so let's see. Oh, it has a short, very short bristled, and it's like rubber bristles. Maybe I'm just spacing, but I feel like Hourglass hasn't released a new product in a while. So it's like exciting. I wish more brands did that, didn't release new products because when they actually come out with something, it's exciting because you're excited to see what they've been working on versus like popping things out every single week. They probably came out with something like last week and I just totally am spacing. I think I am going to do false lash today, but I do want to see how this mascara does. Okay, it's very separating. I feel like I would use this as a second mascara. It kind of reminds me of my Revlon So Fierce, which I love layering with. So I could see myself using this as a layering second mascara. I feel like as a first, it's not giving me quite as much volume as I like, but it is very separating. Like it looks like I have a lot of lashes right now. I'm just gonna trim these way down. So these are the Makeup Geek Ava 3D Mink Lashes, Faux Mink. While my lash glue is drying, I think I'm actually gonna take Sea Salt, which is that like iridescent kind of one and put it on my inner corner. I realized I didn't put anything right here. Definitely want to wet that shade because it has a lot of fallout, but that is pretty. I don't know if I've worn this lash style before. I think I have, but I really like him if I haven't. <laughs> I'm going to try the same Hourglass mascara for my bottom lashes because it gets pretty tiny at the end, the, the bristles. So I think I can use it for down here. Ooh, that's burning. Eyes are watering. I like how that applied on the lower lashes. It's just always a test of will it transfer, you know, throughout the day for me on my lower lashes. Some mascaras do, some don't, but it also just depends on how you set your under eyes. For lips, I'm going to try this Colored Rain Suspect liquid lipstick. Hopefully this is the right tone. I'm going to try a little bit. Yeah, I think they'll be pretty. Lorac came out with new glosses that I want to try, so I'm going to use Out of Office, and this looks like pretty peachy kind of shade. Mmm, oh my god. It smells like cake. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty. Very reflective. Oh, that's a pretty gloss. I feel like this combo might be a good bridal lip, actually. I saw some comment the other day that was like, where's the bridal makeup video that you've been talking about for approximately four years? Yes, I have not done it yet. Honestly, now, for some reason, when I wasn't in a relationship, it felt totally fine and normal to do a bridal makeup video. I've had like the veil, like a fake veil in there for like four years to use for the video. But now, I don't know. It just feels kind of weird. Just feels a little different. Don't know if that makes sense at all. But moral of the story, I really like this combo. And I feel like if you're getting married soon, this could be a good bridal lip combo. All right, so this is the final look, first impressions. I'm gonna go through some of my top favorites. There really weren't that many, actually any like horrible products today, which is <laughs> shocking. Usually there is. I think the only thing that, you know, you can figure out for yourself if it's worth your money or not, but me personally, I would probably skip out on the Becca Zero. I think the few standout products for me are definitely the e.l.f. Retro in Paradise palette. If you're into these colors, I mean, every shade that I tried was beautiful. I like this powder. It looks nice on the skin. Doesn't look powdery. I like how it made my skin just feel very soft. 
looks good around my pores and I like it underneath my eyes too. So I would totally try this again, both on my face and under my eyes. And the JD Glow highlight, friggin' beautiful. Love the lip combo. If you think you'll like the look of the Hourglass Unlocked, I would say you could probably go with the Revlon So Fierce. To me, they look extremely similar and I don't think you probably need to spend like $30 or whatever this is. You could probably just get the Revlon one. And so far I like the Ilia Liquid Liner if you just like very matte black liners. Sponge was good, bronzer blush was good. We really didn't have that many fails at all today. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below what other videos you wanna see. I'm planning my videos for the next month or two right now. So let me know if you have any specific requests you wanna see. Do you wanna see more like get ready makeup videos? Do you want more hauls? What do you want? Let me know. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. I'm about to hiccup.